Welcome Gold Delegates from around the world. I'm Fleur Bickford, Program Director and MC for Gold Conferences International. I'm here today talking with one of our Gold Lactation 2015 speakers, Diana West, and we are talking a little bit about her upcoming presentation titled Mothers Speak Out, Top 5 Traits of a Great Lactation Consultant. So welcome Diana and thank you for being with us today. Thanks so much Fleur, it's a pleasure to be here. So I would love if you could just tell us a little bit more about yourself to start with and tell us a little bit about your uh, professional journey. I know that you went to school um, and got a bachelor's degree in psychology, so I would love to hear a little bit more about how you went from psychology into the world of being a lactation consultant. Uh, isn't it interesting how so many of us in the lactation field started out someplace very, very different? In my case, um, I originally thought I wanted to be a social worker, but then I went to social worker classes and it just wasn't quite as exciting as the psychology classes I was taking. But I knew I wanted to specialize in psychology and I actually was working full time uh, throughout most of my college career. And I just became fascinated with the way that businesses um, needed psychologists to have a, a uh, input on their hiring practices, on their training practices, and um, and in different components of their businesses. And that's where I was headed. I was going to grad school when I was pregnant with my first child. And then after he was born, I realized, oh my gosh, I can't leave this kid. I can't leave him with somebody else all day long. And I became a stay-at-home mom. And I don't know if I ever expected that I was going back. I think I did for a while, but then I kind of got really involved in being a mother and the challenges I had with breastfeeding. So I then became um, a La Leche computer after falling in love with La Leche League and all that it taught me and the ways that it helped me to be a better mother. And that led me naturally into wanting to become a professional lactation consultant. I found my work with mothers to be tremendously rewarding, and I really enjoyed the challenge of the more difficult types of cases that I sometimes saw. So I really just um, did a lot of self-preparation and qualified to take the exam and fortunately passed and set out my shingle. And I've been doing this for almost, uh, gosh, 13, 14 years now as a lactation consultant in private, working with mothers in the postpartum time frame after their discharge from hospital. It's really been an amazing journey. I've had the opportunity to work with some amazing, fantastic mothers who've just gone to tremendous efforts to be able to breastfeed. And of course, with every woman that I work with, I learn so much that helps me with the next client. Okay, thank you, Diana. And it is definitely really interesting how you know, like you say, so many of us start off somewhere else and then find our way to the lactation consulting and, uh, you know, also well, interesting. You're right. Yeah, yeah. And I was just, go ahead. Interesting too, you know, what you were saying about how everything changed when you had a baby. And I know that was my experience too. It, uh, that certainly led me somewhere very different to where I was expecting to go. And I think that, again, that's very true of a lot of us in the profession. We have our children and then that totally changes everything. <laughs> It does, but you know, so many times we also find ourselves bringing in small components to, to different degrees of our previous lives, and I know that the psychology has always been fascinating to me, the psychology of breastfeeding, and I think that that, if I look at a commonality of all the different topics that I've concentrated on in my books, and my writing, and my talks, it's the psychology. It really is. It's how we talk to each other, what's important, what drives us, what motivates us, that really, to me, has become one of the most important components of being successful in breastfeeding. Yeah, really interesting to hear you say that. It's, um, you know, I certainly find in my own practice that the, you know, I'm focusing more and more these days, you know, like obviously we're focusing on the breastfeeding, but it's amazing how, especially in private practice, when you have the time to actually sit with the family for an extended period of time and just finding like, you know, how much counseling I end up doing and how much I'm yeah. needing to draw on those skills that I have from my nursing background and, you know, the counseling courses that I've taken and really needing to draw on that because these 
families are really needing a lot of that. And it's an area that I think we are really well placed as lactation professionals. You know, we see these moms during such a really vulnerable time in their lives. And it's, you know, wonderful to be able to provide that kind of support to them. And isn't that a perfect segue into this topic, (laughs) to this talk? It certainly is. So you're going to be talking to us about uh, the survey that you did about what makes a great lactation consultant. So I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit more about the survey and why you decided to do it. And, you know, was there anything about the results or the process that surprised you? Oh, gosh. Great questions. Um, The first thing is what brought, what, what made it happen. And that all credit goes to Lisa Morosco my co-author for the Making More Milk book. This was her idea. I can't take any credit for the idea. She just was wondering, you know, what is it that mothers really want? And I think the, the, the question became important to her because she was so often seeing that when she was putting efforts in certain directions, it didn't always seem to match with what mothers would come to her and really seem to want. So that's why the survey um, idea came to her mind. And then she she brought it to me to do with her. And gosh, I jumped at the chance because this is something that's always fascinated me. I find it to be a really, really uh, rich question. How can we help mothers most effectively by knowing what they want, what they really want? And also I would say that sometimes what they think they want is not always what they truly want when we dig in a little bit deeper. And that's what we were hoping in this in this survey if we designed it right we would hope to get to a little bit of the deeper uh, motivations that were not always the easy first answers and i think that we actually did get to that and i'm excited this talk because boy the satisfaction that a mother has um, really plays into her memories of her interaction with the lactation consultant, as well as her memories of how breastfeeding really went overall. I know that people in their 80s and 90s talk about their breastfeeding experiences and the interactions that they had with people around that time colors so much of their interpretation of how it went. And if we can positively influence that by understanding more precisely what mothers in general want, then God, power to help her frame her breastfeeding experience more positively. That's so interesting, and hearing you say that makes me think of, um, you know, sort of quote uh, that says, you know, people will forget what you tell them, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And I think that, that I is... love that quote. I yeah. really do. In fact, I need to build that into the talk. But Fleur, <laughs> do you know who said it? That here's a, a pop quiz. I dug deeply <laughs> to find out who said this. Do you know who it was? I don't actually. We'll have to research that one, but it's such no, a great I'm quote. Gonna, I'm going to tell you right now because I used to think it was Kathy Carruthers, and I gave her credit for many years because I thought it was just brilliant. Well, no, she's she or somebody else pointed out it wasn't her, um, but the person said, I can't remember. It was somebody historical, and so then I dug. It was Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, okay. <laughs> of all people, not someone we think of as being deeply caring and compassionate. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. I am really looking forward to hearing more about your presentation. And uh, just as a final question for you, what do you hope delegates that are listening to your presentation are going to take away from it? Oh, gosh. I really, really hope that we can deepen our understanding of the internal emotional world of mothers that's not always the words that they're saying to us directly when we can understand this we have a better chance to help her meet her goals and to address her needs more directly so that 60 80 years from now she's remembering her breastfeeding experience much more positively because of her inner Okay, thank you. And I think that's such an important thing. So really excited about hearing um, more details about the results of your survey. So thank you so much for being here today to chat with us a little bit. Thank you, Fleur. Really enjoyed it. 
Okay, so for our delegates, you'll be able to hear more from Diana West about this interesting topic at her live presentation coming up Tuesday, April 28th at 1700 UTC. So we look forward to seeing you then. Bye everyone.